Captain Eddie Rickenbacker speaks at the World War I Overseas Flyers Reunion on Saturday evening, 24 June, 1961. The introduction is given by Major Bryant of the Air Force Museum. Our ace of aces, who is also the winner of our highest award, the Medal of Honor, Captain Eddie Rickenbacker. What a handsome looking lot of people. I've never seen so many old retreads and half tracks. Fat, wrinkled, bald, and whatnot as there are here for this occasion. And the amazing thing is, they all belong to that great organization known as the pilots, the combat pilots, U.S. combat pilots of World War I. Of course, every time I look in the mirror every morning, I see that I'm getting younger. No wrinkles, no bald head, no surplus weight, and whatnot. However, it's a wonderful thing to be fortunate enough to have the opportunity <clears throat> as a victim of the podium to talk to a mixed audience where the women are so young and beautiful. I've never known these old retreads to be so slow on the pickup. <laughs> they weren't that way in World War I. <laughs> Being born in Ohio, a native of Columbus, I'm happy to be back among my own. Time marches on. And as we look back, the years behind us, 40, 50, or whatever they may be, actually are only yesterday because they are reality. But looking ahead, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, or 50, it's eternity because it's complete mystery. And if we recognize that fundamental fact, we won't worry about time. I've tried, in my humble way, as the years rolled on in a lifetime, to let the years roll by without attempting to stop them, but try like hell to keep up with them. So far, I can say that the good Lord has blessed me. I've been fortunate in many ways, more than probably any living man of the generation, because I probably cheated the old Grim Reaper more than any man of this present generation. And that isn't because I'm brighter or I'm more knowledgeable, but it's because fundamentally I have faith in that power above because if I hadn't had that faith, I wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> to have this group of World War I pilots and officers who were in combat gathered together on this occasion is one of the proudest moments of my life. I'm happy to, in my humble way, have had a hand in the development of that project. 
We started it with the help of Royal Fry, and I want to say that if there was ever a young man dedicate to a, dedicated to a cause, it's Royal Fry, one of your own. <laughs> we mustn't forget that as the years roll by, time must automatically roll by with it. However, there never was a time in history when you and I, we the American people, faced more trying problems, more trying situations, or when our country, this dear old land of ours, America as I love it, was in a more dangerous position as far as preserving our way of life. Keep in mind that we must live with the fact that communism exists in the world and that we have one-third of the world's population today dominated by this vicious philosophy. We are surrounded, rather two-thirds of our nation is surrounded by this vicious philosophy. And we must face this fact. We must not be afraid because our generation exists in a period of terrible peril. But I repeat, we must not be afraid because the nation afraid is already dead. Life is sweet, yes, but as a great people, let us not value it above principle. If we Americans falter now, if we cringe in fear before the threat of a nuclear war, if we soften and appease and try to mollify the most evil force that ever came upon the face of this earth, then the people of all the world will sink into slavery, which is far worse than death. We Americans are, in our Constitution, today, you might say, are the last bastion of freedom on this earth. Please believe me when I say that none of us are ever too old to fight for the God-given privileges that were granted us when this land was born. I say never too old to fight, never, because of this frontier. It is the only frontier of liberty and freedom left. We mustn't forget one of the greatest achievements in the history of the world because of the freedoms and the opportunities that our forefathers granted us in the composition of the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of, Impen uh, of Independence. Where else in the land or in the world what other land in the world could men, like the Wright brothers, have the freedom of action and the opportunity to create one of the greatest instruments in the history of the world, the aeroplane? And I think it's your duty and the duty of all citizens of this community, as well as the state of Ohio, my home state, to preserve that shrine indefinitely for the benefit of the generations to come. Look back at the history of the first flight at Kitty Hawk in 1903 when the Wright brothers of Wilbur Wright wired his sister in the same city that they had actually flown 
actually flown and that they hope to be home by Christmas. Your own Dayton News, which wasn't under the management of the present organization, had a little two-inch story the following Sunday on the society page that the Wright brothers hoped to be back home by Christmas. Fantastic as it seems, it's true. Recognizing that we the people, you and I, the men and women of this great land, at that time failed to understand what was happening to the world. We are here tonight representing the American First Combat Flying Brigade of World War I are here only because of that great achievement. We were babes in arms, but it was all relative at that time, relative to the degree that there existed a certain amount of chivalry in those early days of aerial warfare. Well do I remember when we lost a man that someone of the squadron would fly high over the enemy's airport and drop a note attached to a long hundred foot streamer asking for information. Or if they lost a man, we would drop the same kind of a note telling them exactly what happened because they always returned the compliment. That day is gone. Gone because there's such a thing as communism in this world today. Gone because, unfortunately, many of our young people have never had the good privilege or the opportunity of knowing the advantages of the God-given blessings and the blessings that their forefathers fought, died, and bled for that we may profit and enjoy from them. Why? Frankly, because we've lost the morality that goes with freedom, with independence, with a free enterprise system. It's a quick buck age. Everybody wants something for nothing or more for less. No matter who it hurts, that day too will come to pass. But let it not happen to the extent that we, the people of this generation, can be blamed for it, because the generations ahead will condemn us if we do, and justly so. Naturally, I've been very fortunate, and of course I'm grateful to the good Lord above, because if it were not for him, I would not be here tonight, because I'm not qualified beyond his will or power. I want to say that we here, representing World War Combat pilots, and members who fought on the front in 1918 have tonight, said the President, and to you, the Air Force officials, the Chamber of Commerce, and the members of your society of this community are grateful for your reception. We're grateful beyond words because tonight I say to you sincerely presents a precedent that will live in history, live in history. It'll be a great inspiration for the younger generation 
because they're the ones who must carry the torch of leadership and the responsibility in the next decade or two when we are beyond that point or have gone into the great beyond. If man is going to, going to survive, if the inspiration for free men, opportunity and blessings are going to survive, then the younger generation will have to have that inspiration from you and I. That you and I have enjoyed in our lifetime in order to pass it on to them and which someone passed on to us. Because the will to remain free today is the only thing that will carry America forward and not backward or let it stagnate to the degree that it will become a second-rate nation. I do not think it will or can because I think the future of America is unlimited in many ways. And you know, when we stop to think of it, it was some 2,000 years ago that an individual came out of Galilee and inspired the world and mankind to desire freedom, individual freedom and dignity. And if it had not been for that great inspiration, there never would have been an America, never. And as long as America has been created and has been the inspiration of free men and women everywhere in the world to wish to desire to be free, then we have a moral obligation that we must not, under any circumstances, neglect any longer. I'm satisfied that we can and will carry forward to the degree that the day will come when the plague called communism will be wiped off of the face of Mother Earth. <laughs> True, it may cost millions of lives, mine included, but after all, are we going to place life above principle? Or are we going to preserve principle in spite of life for generations to come? I think we will. <laughs> Today, let me say to you men of World War I, I am grateful. I am indebted, and I hope that I may have the good fortune and the opportunity to be with you again and often throughout the years ahead. I'm grateful for the privilege of being with you tonight. Thank you.